The Uganda Support Municipal Infrastructure Development USMID is a World Bank funded program administered by the Ministry of Lands, Housing and Urban Development. The ministry implemented the program with a total funding of US dollars 510 million from the World Bank. I want to thank the strong project management team who were the foot soldiers on the ground, you know, interpreting those details, writing those certificates making those changes together as a team helped uh, USMID project to come through in Lira City. One of the greatest challenge was actually the way this, uh, this, these contracts are awarded. These are called hybrid contracts. They are awarded from Kampala. The procurement officers are just called to go and be part of it, which means even their presence, a number of decisions could have already been made. So they just go to endorse. And this one affected us because the contractor who was given to us had a number of projects running and therefore he got outstretched. In Jinja we have, I think, worked on close to 10 kilometers within this program. The only challenge with Jinja, but which is, which is positive, is that the, the, the size of roads in Jinja has made us as if we have worked on a few kilometers. Just because the roads in Jinja are quite wide roads, they are very well planned. You can't compare the roads in Jinja, if you compare Jinja with Injeru or Kamuli, we are in the same cluster. One would think that Jinja has done little, but one side of Jinja, if it's a double carriageway, is the size of uh, uh, the road in, in Injeru. So the success is we have had infrastructure developed, well developed. The tarmac that we have had is the first of its kind in this, in this city. We have had solar lights, the lights that are in Jinja, they are the first of its kind. They have come out of this program. The drainage, drainage has always been a problem because it is expensive working on drainage. That is why you have always worked on roads, not minding about drainage just after a short while, then drainage affects the roads. The exercise of cutting roads now and again, uh, this service provider has come, network, whatever, uh, we have, inducts have been provided. Therefore, the success has been, the infrastructure is put in place, and it is quite a good infrastructure. As the curtain falls on this multi-million dollar infrastructure project, the reputed East Team International Consultants has been tasked with conducting an end of program evaluation of USMID AF. Because this is when they're already doing the budgets, they have this planning figures. Yeah. Yeah. So we can use that figure that they have and we shall qualify in the report. Improved fiduciary safeguards, urban planning and own source revenue generation capacities increased planned infrastructure completion, enhanced service delivery, and enhanced Ministry of Lands, Housing and Urban Development capacity for urban development and management. Before we submit, we used it to collect about 1.5 billion. We went to 2 billion, but now as we speak with the inclusion of this Usumid done, the roads where this uh, Usumid project has been uh, done, then, of course, we have shoot up to 6 billion now. So you can see the impact of this. You can see the impact of the project. That we are not only looking at beauty, we are also looking at the other social economic transformation that I have talked about. People are doing business, and the council is also getting a lot of money from this. Because we are getting money from brands, which are also on those roads. We are getting money from these agents, which are also basing on the Usman roads. So we are doing well. It really makes me happy when I see Jinja now coming back to life. Because these days when you come to Jinja, the city is vibrant. During the peak times, like in the morning when people are coming into work, evening time when people are rushing home, and then in the night, you can see that the nightlife in Jinja has come back. Eh? Simply because this youth mid project has really actually given us that kind of achievement. We local governments, we should come up with a strategy of having uh, some funds on our side, that when we need to do um, that when we need to do maintenance, we do it there and then. Because what kills these roads is lack of maintenance. The USME Day of program has been credited with facilitating the elevation of the previous ten municipalities to regional cities as a result of the new infrastructure. The work started with the central business district, where you if you move within the central business district. 
all has been completed. This one purely to promote the businesses within those area. The benefit of this use mid road is in terms of trade, we are registering an improvement in trading. Uh, there was no physical development plan for the municipality then. They used part of this use mid money for drawing the physical development plan for the then divisions in the in the municipality. That is Layibi, Badeke, Laro and Peche. We have also used this money to at least collect data of the taxpayers and updated our data register. Approximately 200 kilometers of new roads were built during the program time, enhancing working and living conditions in metropolitan local governments. The project had uh, challenges, uh, but with uh, the, uh, the rights of way, uh, then we have some people who have uh, stubbornly refused to remove encroachment and they have remained uncooperative. Others have appreciated it. But uh, the incomplete works are not uh, so enormous. The percentages are small. Some walkways, then uh, the greening in some areas. You find that uh, some of these challenges can actually be addressed during the period they call defective period, which uh, takes them to about a year. And the challenges, other roads are too squished, whereby in a junction, when you are crossing a junction, the road is too squished. If they could enlarge it, a little bit for us could be good, but all in all, the work is very, very, very okay. And I want to thank so much World Bank. When you look at the zebra crossing, when it's raining, the 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 the, the color is not the color is not okay. Sometimes uh, when you want to cross the road, sometimes it's very difficult. And uh, the solar is there, but sometimes you see other places now becoming dark. I am sorry for the border border and those guys who use the road recklessly by driving, over speeding over misusing the road, congestion is too much. Sometimes when the children crossing the road, actually sometimes it disappoints me. Uh, I started working in this street before uh, this improvement. Before we had a lot of uh, challenges, like uh, we couldn't operate till late hours, or we couldn't even uh, leave our things out. It was just a quiet street for us. Uh, people could not even, like in terms of customers, they, they would not even want to pass this road. First of all, it was so dirty, and we had these other street kids who would dominate the street. People would fear to really walk in this street. After this youth meet project, as you can see, people prefer to walk along this road more than before. We have a challenge. They have failed completely to work on the drainage channels. As you can see, some of the drainage channels, they have not worked on them. Water is always flowing on the road when it rains heavily. So, my appeal to our leaders, let them coordinate with the contractors so that they can work on the road for us. With these youth mid projects, uh, we are now able to uh, have these patients reach the hospital in time and also uh, our motor vehicles that evacuate these patients from home, uh, some of them who use border border, are able to now reach the hospitals in time. Accidents in Bara town have kind of reduced because way back we would be struggling for pathways with those border border people and it was really hard and tough on us. No, Gaje Kastoma, Kidea Ojitirumba Zerpuaka, Wino Borsumati, all these metropolitan roads are outfitted with solar lighting, cycle lanes, parking lanes, pedestrian walkways, bus stops, street garbage cans, drainage, and other amenities. Most of the roads in the CPT are caved eh? and the paved means. We have reduced dust. This has enabled the businesses to prosper. And uh, it has increased also in local revenue collection, or also revenue collection, because the number of businesses have come around these roads, or the volumes have increased. The number of projects that we are going to do because of the funding, this includes the beautification of the mayor's garden, uh, the children's park. These are 
that's been by yet to undertake them, one will be future projects and also some other roads not work, not yet worked on. Uh, we used to have a challenge of uh, floods because the existing roads had the gullies, the potholes and had no drainage. So the town used to flood. Now drainage has been catered for and the water now drains properly and there are no more floods in town. The town is very clean. We have catered for environment. We have provided for trees along the walkways and in the islands. We also provided for flowers in the islands. And uh, we are also uh, adding, which is not yet done, but which is going to be done, we are putting sculptures. Yes, reflecting, uh, you know, we enable the natural park. So we have the, most of those animals, the buffaloes, the lions, the elephants. Most of the tourists have been uh, coming and uh, going to stay in Fort Porto. But now that the town is, the town is very clean and the roads are very good, and the street lights are, are on now, those tourists no longer travel. They come, go to the national park and stay in Kasese town. We have the taxi park, which is the big project. M market square, around the market. Already that one, they have put it, small few things, which they have not done on it. In the, in the taxi park, they have remained with the, some rights on the, on the face. We must see, here is a road. Let us put our things in proper way so that when this second phase comes, no obstruction in the what? In these roads. But sincerely speaking, some roads are too narrow. Really, some roads were constructed. They broke some people's houses to make the roads big, but the roads reduced with the construction of those roads. We don't know where the problem came from. Sincerely speaking, there are some roads like that one which it passes through. Chamber gardens. They broke people's houses, but the road is really small. So, we request you to come back, and next time when you come back, improve on that side of the roads. Make those roads look so good. Make them big enough that at least two vehicles can pass at the same time. And continue with the work because uh, there are some roads which are pending. They are. They. We think they are. For with me, but they don't have uh, uh, those uh, lakes like uh, Lubaga Lord, uh, Namunda Lord. Those lords don't have. There are some areas where you find people chopping firewood on the town. So we must sensitize and educate our, our population on how to keep our, our, our projects safe. We must sensitize them on how maintain the drainage intact so that we can avoid the blockage. Local economic development sub-projects have been implemented in three cities, Mbarara, Lira and Hoima, as well as four municipalities, Moroto, Entebbe, Mubende and Busia. And I want to say that we appreciate the government of Uganda and the World Bank uh, for this project and the Ministry of Lands. Uh, because indeed, this is a project which is very visible in our cities and municipalities which are implementing it. We have uh, implemented the uh, abattoir or slaughterhouse, a modern slaughterhouse, because what we had or what we have been using is really was condemned. So we expect also the projections to grow, our revenues to, uh, to grow, and uh, I believe uh, it will serve us better. But uh, on the abattoir, there are a few things uh, the Ministry of Agriculture wanted us to to add on, to make sure that it is functional. The little monies we have, we are going to make sure uh, we put them there, we put that money there to make sure we put everything needed uh, to make sure this abattoir or slaughterhouse operates properly. They constructed an abattoir whereby we feel that we shall get good meat which is being slaughtered from a good area. So we really thank the government. We really thank the people, even the local leaders, because they worked hand in hand with the project. They did not sabotage the project. That's why you can see that in Hoima, Hoima is now signing. We've even constructed a, a very good facility for a resident veterinary doctor in the, that very facility. We believe it, it will yield uh, good results for us, 
uh, the, the, the consumers and the traders. In most street lights in Hoima City, they are no longer functioning. Uh, these manholes uh, they, they, they put normally uh, to cover sewage sewage holes, they are all damaged, and the, in that process, they are not maintained and well kept. So we believe uh, USMID will put money uh, that will be able to uh, to maintain these roads and these lights. Otherwise, we thank you. Through the Interministerial Program Technical Committee of USMID, quarterly engagements facilitated the peer-to-peer -peer learning and audits of the projects under implementation. The program has been around for like 10 years and we have gained a lot of experiences. We have learned a lot of lessons. We have uh, executed a lot of uh, our contracts. Because we, we have had cases where some municipalities lost money because they did do certain things and they lost. And they've seen that actually, if you are given and you don't safeguard, you can easily lose. So that sense of ownership amongst the citizens who have benefited is very clear. If you are running a project of uh, five years and you are spending six months to procure a contract to do three kilometers, you can imagine if you are going to do 10 kilometers how long it takes. So that is a lesson that we've learned and we are going to try and learn from, the, from those lessons for us to improve. The other one is uh, designs. When you start a project, we would like to see that all the feasibility studies, the engineering designs are done early enough because they take a long time. Up to now we are completing Usmid, but we have cases where people are saying we delayed because of designs. So we want, the, the lesson we've learned is that design should be one of the first things to do actually before effectiveness of the project. The other important lesson is contract management. You get a contractor on board, the people who are supposed to manage a contract in terms of supervision are not on the game. They are not doing what they are supposed to do. When they are doing it, they do it uh, very inefficiently. So those are some of the, the The other one we have seen is that it's very important in this project to have a very good working team between the technocrats and the political leaders. Over a 10-year period from 2013 to June 2024, 33 local governments covering 10 regional cities, 22 municipalities and 11 refugee hosting regions have been racing against time to complete infrastructure projects. The ministry's support to refugee host districts was in three ways. Infrastructure that enhances social cohesion between refugees and host communities, physical design of host communities' land, and systematic land adjudication and titling. Please, I ask you to keep them safe, to use them properly. Don't put anything on them, leave them as they are. Get an envelope, put them in that big envelope properly. Keep them where you can keep safely away from fire, away from water, away from ink, away from anything which will spoil. Implementing a variety of static infrastructure sub-projects such as leisure parks, 17 markets, 7 playground fields, 21 resource centers, 10 taxi parks, 4 bridges and 3 drainage channels. You can see on the lanes of the low-cost ceiling from Boyale town to the settlement, it has lit the whole of that area. And even when you go to the play field, there are also lights the other side. And so, Boyal is getting lit. So if you want to cross to Alaro, we used to remove all our clothes while moving to Alaro. But nowadays, the road is now okay. You are free to move. Those who come and construct this road, I thank you very well. We are now okay. We are now seeing very, so many things. The business is now going. The, our children are studying. We are now getting the services from this health center. Thank you very much. We are a rural district and we don't have uh, places of recreation. We don't have good hotels and this is going to be our everything. Weddings are going to be here. Educational functions are going to be here. National celebrations are going to be here. Everything is going to be here. That is the meaning of these projects for us. And being community-owned and led projects, the communities in which these projects got undertaken also played a role in ensuring 
is successfully executed. So it's a collective responsibility that saw to it that this project got executed successfully and we are today all witnessing the commissioning of the resource centers as well as the market and the land titles for the beneficiaries to get value from it. Thank you. This resource center of Palorinia was supposed to be worth 1.8 billion shillings, but we have constructed it at 966 million shillings. We have also added a bit of the additional fencing and the gatehouse, which has pushed the money to about 1.1 billion shillings. So that is quite less than what originally was supposed to be executed. But that doesn't affect the quality, except it affects the serviceability. Because the resource center was supposed to have a kitchen, it was supposed to have a wider paved area, it was supposed to have a, a more detailed installation inside, like fully played library and all the things, but we could not do them because of the cost. The ministry launched systematic land adjudication and certification efforts in Kamwenge district, Kaberebere, Nkoma sub-county, and granted 774 freehold land titles to people under the program by May 2024. Apart from transacting with the foreigners as third parties, the freehold certificates of titles offer holders the possibility to access credit from various financial institutions hereby empowering them financially. The systematic property adjudication and certification process continues in the other district local governments and all scheduled parcels are yet to be completed and distributed by the program's closure date. Beneficiaries of USMID AF infrastructure initiatives from 33 local governments in regional cities, municipalities and refugee host districts give proposals for improving such interventions in the near future. So we, we are praying, we are praying for the next phase so that uh, it, uh, we expand the road network from the center even to, to the periphery up to the periphery of the city. Let it come and uh, help us in uh, other loads, such that in Kamali municipality, we have tamakit loads only, and those lights must have lights which can help us to work during night time. Uh, and let them also build for us a market, such that us, who are street vendors, come, or go and work from there, such that we also get money from there. There are some areas where you find people chopping firewood on the top. So we must sensitize and educate our, our population on how to keep our, our, our projects safe. We must make, uh, sensitize them on how to maintain the green so that we can avoid the blockage. Right, like this one, the roadside is not good. They are supposed to work to make the, the roadside to be okay so that if the water is coming, the water should flow direct to the, water, to the main. Then if the government can even put even colors, I think it can be good. But the recommendation is because manpower is dynamic. Today an engineer is here, tomorrow being in UNRWA. So we should, I recommend that let's have continuous capacity building. And of course, there are things that keep changing. Computers now are everywhere. There are things that we used to do in analog way. Now they are digital. So capacity building should continue so that we measure to the current standards of whatever is taking place. These infrastructures, they are very huge. They are very big. Uh, we cannot manage to maintain them with our local revenue only, of which I request that the next phase, whether it's, it's whether to be managed with the use meet funding or the central government funding, and our different roles should be specified. This utility owners, Omeme and the National Water and Sewage Corporation, should work with us so that we do not have to install these utility lines on, in a way that in the future they have to be located. They should be done in a very well organized manner, planned manner, so that they are made permanent without further locations. It's quite important to have all the stakeholders participate in decision making, in ensuring that the project is executed successfully. 
That is vital. Two, utility recursion is supposed to be undertaken earlier before project commencement. So that, so as to avoid delays, unnecessary delays that we experience. Renew of another project or you submit addition of financing phase two so that unfinished priorities like the construction of the market is considered uh, tamaking of the urban roads in the Bayari market are considered. That is our recommendation. The contractors also manage time. That a road where you actually give in one year, that in one year we shall have the project handed over, you find that they are taking two years. And they are giving some excuses here and there. So we need also to expedite in the process of actually uh, quickening these works to be finished in time so that the people can feel the vibe of having their roads done. You should never tra allow a, an incompetent contractor, whether you have the resources, whether you have a good technical team, when you get a bad contractor, you have got it completely wrong. Because you have cases where bad contractors have been on board and from 2021 up to now, they are still working. I mean, for a project you cannot afford to do that. It is expected that this end of program evaluation efforts will continue to provide the groundwork for a more comprehensive improvement of urban infrastructure throughout Uganda.